Hi, I'm Kate. And I'm Hank. And we're from the Comp 110 team here at UNC. And we're going to help you learn to program. Woo! Yay! Hello, everyone. We just wanted to start you off from base one with this main method that we normally make. So, uh, we're going to go ahead. We have our package here, and we're going to make a new class. So when you make a new class, you just go to new, and then you do class. So here we are. We have our new class, um, and we're going to name this... What do we want to name this, Hank? Uh, let's name it Class Demo. Class Demo. Okay, so we're going to name this Class Demo. And the fun thing is if you click this handy dandy thing right here, it'll make this a main method for us because I can never remember the exact format you're supposed to put it. Yeah, it's but pretty complicated. We, yeah, but if we had not clicked it, it would have just been that. But we clicked it, so it's like that. Anyways, so here we are. And... This is what we call a runner in our past problem sets, but notice how it doesn't need to be called a runner. That's just the convention so you know where your code is being run. And from here, you can be calling your classes and other things that make things happen that will run. So, to start off, uh, what is a class? I just used that word. I know you've heard it a lot. Well, classes are an object, like blueprints, for objects in the real world. And they can have properties and do actions. That's right, Kate. So, a main method, you don't have to understand how all of these weird looking words up here work yet, but a main method just means this is where your program starts. So if we do something like system.out.println hello world and run our program, the computer will print out hello world, and this is the canonical first program. Um, and this may seem like a lot of complexity just to do something like print out hello world, um, but Java is a really powerful language and uh, gives us, the, the reason this is complex is because we can build um, things that are much more complex than just printing out hello world. Uh, so it would be pretty boring if all we did was print out things in a line or uh, throw around variables in one method here. So that's why we have object-oriented programming. So object-oriented programming is just a way of organizing code to make things work more like they do in the real world. So think about how objects work in the real world. An object can have properties and it can do certain things. So think about, for example, a car. Some of the properties of a car might be its paint color, uh, the brand, maybe the current speed it's going, uh, and some of the actions or things that uh, a car can do, the capabilities of a car, would be like uh, drive forward or open the door, things like that. Or if you think about a person as an object, what are some of the properties that a person might have? Well, every person has a name, an age, a height, uh, things like that. And then a person also has a lot of different things it can do, like speak or drink milk or run. Um, so in programming, we can write classes that are like blueprints for these objects, where we specify, we tell the computer, um, hey, I want to create in my program an object that is a car, and tell it what properties a car has, and what things a car can do. Okay, so now we're going to make our person class. Um, and we're just like Kate did before, going to go to new class, and the name of it is going to be person. And we're not going to make a main method here because we already have a main method in another class in our program. This is just going to be an object um, that is used in our program. So we talked about how objects in real life have properties, like a car would have a property of a paint color or a speed. Um, so let's think about what are some of the properties that a person could have. Um, a person might have age, name, and height. So if we wanted to declare a property that was the name of this person in our class, um, we would first declare the visibility. So we're going to make these private, and you don't have to worry too much about why, but this just means that other people can't like get in and mess around with them in our class. Uh, then we have to declare the type of the variable. So a name is going to be a string, which is just like a word or a phrase, a series of characters in Java. Um, and then we give it a name. In all instance variables in comp110, we start with an, un an underscore just to keep things more organized, and we're going to call this name. And then we always put a semicolon, and that is how you declare an instance variable. So another instance variable that a person might have is an age, and we're going to make that a type int for integer, um, and call that underscore age. 
and they might also have an, a double um, that represents their height. And remember, a double is, an integer is a number that does not have a decimal point. It's a whole number, one, two, three. And a double is a, a number that has a decimal point, so it can be much more specific. And height is pretty specific, so we're going to make that a double. Uh, and then maybe they would have uh, a variable that's the type boolean that was whether they were studying right now or not. So we're going to call that is studying, and we made it of type boolean, which remember is just either yes or no or true or false. Okay, so now that we have declared these properties of what a person is, we're going to go ahead and make methods to use them. So first of all, you don't need to worry about this too much for the moment, but we're going to make a constructor that's empty right now. So remember, a constructor is the same name as the class, uh, but we're just going to leave it empty right now. Okay, so a method is basically an action. So we're going to use methods to do actions upon our instance variables. So one method that we might want to do is our setter and getter methods because we want to set the values for our instance variables right now. So remember for setters and getters with Java we have a convention of how we make them. So this is going to be important to remember. Uh, we're going to make our setters and getters public. So public and setters are void because they're not returning anything. They're just setting a value. So let's set our age. And then you have to give a value that's going to be set to something else. So our age is going to be an integer, and we're going to just name it new age. And then we're going to set that new value that you put in equal to the instance variable. Therefore, we're setting the instance variable, which are these up here, for the rest of the code. So age equals new age right here. So then when we call this method and give a new age value, that value, say we say 10, will then jump to here, which will then be assigned to age. And remember, instance variables can be used throughout all methods in your class. So there's your setter, and then we're going to write a getter. So public, and remember, getters return values because you're getting that value for age. So we say public int get age. And we don't put in a value because we're only receiving values right here. And we're going to return that instance variable that we set with our setter. Okay, so now that we've made a setter and getter for age, pause the video and write setters and getters for string name and double height on a piece of paper in front of you. Remember, you will be asked to write code on some of your exams this semester. Did you get this? So we've written now kind of a basic outline of a programmatic representation of a person. But this doesn't do anything. This program, there's no main method. Nothing's happening within this program, within this class. It's just a, a representation of what a person is. So let's go over to class demo, where we have a main method. So this will actually run our code. Um, and create the next step, to be able to use our person, to be able to use any object in Java, you have to create a new instance of it. We talked in lecture about how classes are like blueprints for objects. So this is like our blueprint of a person. But you can't do anything with a blueprint. Like you can't live in a blueprint of a house or talk to the blueprint of a person. So we have to build a new one. And we do that in Java by saying the type of the thing we want to build and then give it a name. So my name's Hank, so I'm going to name this person Hank. Equals new, because it's a new instance, and then the class again, person. And you always put parentheses after when you're creating a new instance of a class. And we'll come back to what might go in those parentheses later. So what this line of code is doing is creating a new instance of our person class, naming it Hank. This is called instantiation. So now we can call the methods that we wrote in our person.java class on our instance. So just like we said bb8.moveforward a long time ago, now we can say hank.setAge, and I'm 19. So we can do hank.setName, um, and my name is Hank. <laughs> And then Hank dot set height and I'm I don't even know how high I am. Let's do five point nine. <laughs> okay, so now that we've set these values, we can call our getters and like print them. So we can say system dot out dot print line Hank dot get name 
Um, and let's do our person is named. And remember, you can do string concatenation just by adding a plus sign between things that you want to add together. Um, Okay, so now we have this really long print statement that's going to describe our person. And if we run the class, now we have our person is named Hank and is 19 years old and is 5.9 feet tall. Awesome. So since our getter methods that we declared in our person class return these values, all returning means is that when Java gets to this Hank.getName, it's going to go over to the getName uh, method in our person class do the code inside and return um, whatever we tell it to return. And all returning means is it's going to replace this method call here with whatever it returned, which is why when we print it out, it replaces it with Hank, because we set it first with our setter. But this is really tedious, right? Setting all, the all of our instance variables uh, with these setter method calls if we had a program where we had lots of people and we had to uh, initialize all of their instance variables with like this, it would get really complicated and this is more code that we need. Um, thankfully, constructors provide us an easier way to initialize or set the first value of a class's instance variables. So wouldn't it be great if instead of writing all of these setters, we could just say within these parentheses, okay, I want this person's name to be Hank, I want his age to be 19, and I want his height to be 5.9. And constructors will allow us to do that. But this is underlined because we haven't um, created the constructor yet. So you can see that we put items in these parentheses here. Um, and anything that we put in parentheses when we're calling a method, um, you have to be declared in the parentheses um, in the method declaration. So just like we put the number, the integer 19, in when we called set age here, and in our set age declaration, we say, I promise I'm going to pass in an int, and it's going to be called new age. Uh, in the constructor, we have to specify what we're going to pass in. So we have a name, a string name, an int 19, and a double 5.9. So we're going to say, whenever we create a new person, I'm going to pass in a string, and call it name, um, an int and call it age and a double and call it height. Cool. So now Java stopped complaining, um, but we don't we haven't done anything with this name, age, and height values that we passed in. Uh, so we need the purpose of our constructor is to initialize our instance variables. Um, so let's do that. So we set the name, the instance variable of our name, equal to something. Um, and a lot of you guys have been coming into office hours, um, and I've seen a lot of people in their constructor putting, okay, like I'm trying to make a person called Hank, so obviously in my constructor, I'm just going to um, say the name equals Hank. And that will set my name to Hank, or set this person instance's name to Hank. Um, but it will set all, this code here will set every person's name to Hank. So we talked about how classes are like blueprints, and if it's like a blueprint, we don't want to hard code the name. We want to create, be able to create any named person we want. So we couldn't create a person named Kate um, if we had this Hank value here, which is why we pass it in as a parameter. So instead of putting a name here, we're going to put our name variable, and that will take whatever we put in in the parentheses when we create a new instance of our class, replace this name variable with that value, and then assign that to the instance variable for name, which is the name of the current person we're talking about. So pause the video and see if you can finish writing out the rest of this constructor. So this is what the finished constructor looks like. Now we can run it, and the same thing will happen. So we get printed out, our person is named Hank, and is 19 years old, and is 5.9 feet tall. So without setting the values with our setter method calls, we've initialized them to these values we want, and our getters return the things we expected. But Hank, if this was so easy, why did we write setter methods for our emoji class? Well, Kate, setter methods and getter methods are good practice in Java, and even if you don't use them all the time, um, it, they're good things to be able to write. So we write them just to, to, if we ever need to use them, they're there, and to just get practice. 
So we've initialized three of our four instance variables here, and the fourth one they have we have left is our is studying instance variable, which is of the type boolean. And boolean is like an on or off switch. It can either be true or false, nothing in between. It's either yes, no, one, zero, true or false. Um, and so this, since a, a constructor is like a special method that's run every time an object is born or instantiated. Um, we don't really want to pass in a value of, of whether that person is studying at first. We're just going to assume that whenever we create a new person, they start off not studying. Um, so instead of initializing our is studying instance variable to something that we've passed in, we're just going to initialize it to false. And that way, every person that we create um, will start off uh, not studying. So that is how you make a class, starting with first making a runner that will make the class happen, and then making the actual class itself, called person, where we made instance variables, then we initialized them, and then we set getters to receive the values that were set by our constructor. And then we use system.out.println to print those values in our runner called class demo here. So, if you'd like to learn more about how to use a person class to make other methods, keep watching. We'll go over if-else statements and booleans to make sure that everything is covered.